Hi, good to have you back with me. I'm Ken Calloway, and today's program concerns itself with one of the country's most innovative bass fishermen, namely Mr. Lou Childry. We'll be going along with Lou as he fishes the Apalachicola River and some of his tributaries for the largemouth bass. You bass fishermen in particular are going to pick up some useful ideas from today's program. We'll be back with it right after this very important message. It has been said that for every day a man spends fishing, a new day is added to the length of his life. Once angling works its magic on a man's chemical processes, it takes a powerful hold on him, freeing him from the pressures of a career and the chaos of cities and crowded airline schedules. The gods of fishing are kind and happy gods, and they have smiled broadly on the dark, peaceful waters surrounding Apalachicola, Florida, a small town on the Gulf Coast of the state's panhandle. It offers a serene escape for men like Lou Childry, a resident of Foley, Alabama, and a leading manufacturer of fishing tackle in the United States. It was the beginning of spring when Lou got a chance to get away for a few days of fishing with his son, Casey, and friends Shag Shahan, a professional fisherman and tackle tester, Dick Wood, an advertising agency executive, Junior, a fishing guide from Apalachicola, and John, who is also a fishing guide from Apalachicola. Being early spring, it was that time of year when the weather of western Florida can change day by day, and sometimes hour by hour. On this day, Lou and his party were headed for the St. Vincent National Wildlife Refuge, located on St. Vincent Island, just offshore from Apalachicola. Even though it's surrounded by salt water, the island is the scene of an abundant freshwater fishery which has been created by the construction of a small dam. It is also strictly protected by the federal government, and anglers who would fish the fresh waters must transfer from power boats to sculling boats. Motors are prohibited. For the St. Vincent National Wildlife Refuge, like all national wildlife refuges, is administered not for the convenience of the people, but rather for the welfare of the birds, animals, and aquatic life. Our national parks, by contrast, are administered for the enjoyment of the people. For those who are willing to pay the price, however, St. Vincent offers some exceptional largemouth bass and panfish angling. It is by no means the easiest of chores to man the paddles which drive the boats through the quiet waters. Sculling places demands both on strength and finesse, and a practiced sculler often has arms like the proverbial blacksmith. Basically, the fishery consists of a network of channels and small lakes, an angler working with tackle ranging from the most sophisticated gear with artificial lures to cane poles with either a bucket of crickets or a bucket of night crawlers, stands to catch his share of fish. Even when the bigger fish are sulking in the shadows, leaving the field to the smaller ones, there is something intriguing about watching a cork on the water. It's kind of a mini-drama, the cork's first tentative bobs, its sudden disappearance beneath the surface, the timing and reaction of the fishermen. It strikes cards of early boyhood fishing trips in many a man and makes him glow with warm memories.
there's no question that fishing with your son and with good friends can be a satisfying and rewarding experience. But there are times when a man yearns to be alone, to do things in his own way, to investigate and experiment without being accountable to anyone save himself. It was in the upper bays and estuaries near Apalachicola that Lou could satisfy the need to take to the water alone. Sometimes the bass fisherman is as much a hunter as an angler, and he has to search out the fish on its own grounds, in the brush and grass. But Lou Childry, who is widely regarded as one of the most innovative men in the business, has his own ways of improving his chances. Seldom satisfied with anything as it stands, Lou often modifies commercial lures to suit himself. With this lure, for instance, Lou alters the swivel so that the lure will have a different action in the water. He files the head on each side to make it lighter and thus reduce the drag, improving the action. He opens the hook slightly to improve the penetrating angle of the point. He sharpens the hook, which is something any angler should do more often, even with new hooks. He thins and shortens the plastic skirt to lessen resistance to wind during casting. He both spreads and shortens the wire weed guards to improve the action of the lure and increase protection of the hook. Finally, he prepares a port rind to add to the hook, reshaping it to decrease the drag through the water, making it swim more naturally. Whatever the original manufacturers had in mind, it's all changed now. But who's to argue if it works? Like many other wild creatures, a largemouth bass often emerges from his cover at just about the precise time that man heads for his cover, a situation which often occurs when one of the swiftly moving fronts out of the northwest crosses the Gulf Coast. A gray cast takes hold of the day, driving away the brightness. The water changes from placid to restless, and the bass emerge from their cover and begin to feed.
It can be a haunting and awesome experience for a lone fisherman to witness the passing of a spring front, especially if he's in an isolated area, miles from his home dock. It's time to head in for the day. Frequently on the cold, clear days, which often follow a fast-moving spring front, bass head for the thickest of cover and sulk in the deepest of heavy shadows and watery thickets. Lou Childry knew this full well, and he left the clear waters of the bays behind. He headed for the Apalachicola River and its tributaries, hoping the rising muddy waters would hold more willing bass in spite of the bright, clear day. Whether an angler finds a bass or not, a venture into the sluggish and sullen waters of a southern river is an experience worth the time and trouble. The murky river with cypress trees and water oaks guarding its shores seems to hold fast to dark secrets. First, Lou began to fish the lilies, that classic hideout of the bass. His specially modified lure served well here also, fairly skimming across the snags. After a while, however, it became clear that the bass had retreated to cover even deeper than that of the lily pads. The best of lures and techniques won't catch fish that aren't there. Lou headed for the tree-lined shores, aiming to work the cypress knees and the vegetation rooted in the water's edge. Lou was ideally equipped. He had rigged his boat not with one, but rather a pair of specially designed trolley motors. It's a good time to be alone and fishing. The confusion and concerns of modern times seem distant and unimportant. Largemouth bass is a major prize of all the southern freshwater fish. Spawning almost all year long in the warm waters, as indicated by a ripe female in early spring, the bass is an industry in itself. Millions of dollars are spent annually by anglers seeking the pleasure of hooking and landing the bass. Thank you. 
everything converged and began paying off in terms of bass. of casters run certain risks and occasionally meet their match. All the control in the world won't help in the brush, however, if you're not also accurate with the casting rod. is the most prized fish, the primitive bowfin is perhaps the most despised. A survivor from an earlier, more savage geologic age, it's a voracious feeder on other fish, including bass. Even though it is an important factor in keeping populations in check, anglers usually hate the ugly bowfin. Chicola River system is also one of the few called home by the feisty little red-eyed bass, a species which is similar to the smallmouth. Unlike other bass, however, it sports red fins and, as the name suggests, red eyes. Pound for pound, it's one of the hardest fighting fish of the southern rivers. As the end of the day approaches on the Apalachicola River, there's a final thrill awaiting the angler. It is the flight of the white ibises. It's one of the great sights in all the kingdom of the birds. And had Lou Childry failed to take a single fish, he could still have returned to his home and work with a sense of renewal. Angling and the great outdoors are truly a vital part of the existence of man. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's program. You know, I travel all over this country filming our series, and I'm sure there's some good stories out there that I miss. If you know someone in your area that's an expert outdoorsman in his particular field, let me hear from you, and you may see him on our show. Write to me, Box 949, Beaumont, Texas. That's Ken Calloway, Box 949, Beaumont, Texas. Well, that's it for this week. I'll see you next time with more outdoor action.